Hey girl, hey! Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Jensine, aka Jungle Nav, and I'm so happy to have you here today. So, okay, today's video is gonna be a long one. So get yourself a snack, get yourself a glass of wine, some coffee, some tea, some water, whatever you got, and we're gonna get into this giant giant box of makeup from covergirl this is their full spectrum collection so this should be a really interesting video because i'm a little hesitant about some of the face products so this full spectrum collection is advertised as a collection for women of color in this collection we have foundations we have concealers we have a cream contour palette we have pressed powders eyeshadow palettes, eyeliners, lipsticks, lip glosses. There's a lot going on, hence why the box is so heavy. So first of all, I'm going to start with swatching the foundation shades on my face so you guys can see what the deeper colors look like. Um, so yeah, let's get to that part. So I'm going to be starting with the shade Tan Golden 1 and then working my way down to the darkest in the neutral category. So this here is tan golden one. As you can see, obviously a very light on me, but this is their one of the few of the golden undertones, at least for the tan skin range. Next is tan golden two. They kind of blend together, <laughs> but you can see, I mean, they're still very similar, not too much deeper than the first one. Now here we have Tan Cool 2. Next, Deep Cool 1. Next, Deep Cool 2. Now we have Deep Cool 3. Then, Deep Golden 1. So I wanted to stop and show you. This is the first deep golden shade that I've seen, and I am definitely in the golden family, but this is like, really light <laughs> for me um you know so that's one of my first gripes before we continue with the rest is that there seem to be a lot of shade jumps here and i feel like they have done a spectacular job with foundation launches in the past um and i'll get into that but I'm just like looking at this, it's kind of, it's all over the place, you know? There isn't as much of a smooth gradient between shades. Next, Deep Golden 2, then Deep Neutral 1. Now, I'll probably say I'm closer to Deep Neutral 1, even though I do have golden undertones. Um, this is just the closest that I can find to my actual skin tone. And the last one here is Deep Neutral 2. So as you guys can see here by the swatches, it's alright, like I said. It just kind of jumps all over the place. I'm not super impressed with the swatches and the undertones. Um, I feel like they could really have developed that. And you know what? I'm actually a really big fan of the True Blend Matte Made Foundation. I love that. I think the range is incredible. In fact, I still have the PR box here. So let me show you that box so you can be reminded of the range that CoverGirl is capable of. So after seeing that, can you honestly tell me that you think this is the best that CoverGirl can do because I know that they can do better and I'm just calling it like it is so with that being said let's go ahead and apply this foundation so the primer that goes with this collection this is the CoverGirl matte ambition primer and I'm really excited about this one because I'm always looking for a great mattifying drugstore primer now it does have SPF in this and originally I was like <gasps> No, <laughs> because my skin is super sensitive and usually drugstore SPFs have a lot of chemical sunscreens in them and I actually respond well to physical sunscreens like titanium dioxide. So when I did look, there's a little drug fact sheet. This one has an active ingredient that's called 
and Sulizol. So I don't actually know if this is a chemical sunscreen. I'm gonna try this out for you guys and if I happen to experience like a bad reaction, I'll put it down in the description box or I'll put it as the pinned comment. But here's for hoping for the best, girl. So this is what it looks like and it looks pretty like sus to me. <laughs> I'm really hoping it doesn't look like hella ashy on me. Um, we just we just don't know. Hey, it's actually clear. Do you guys see that? No white ashy stains left. That I have to say, I'm impressed by that part. We'll see how it does later on. So real quick for you guys, I'm just gonna say there is a smell like paint <laughs> from the primer. Uh, I, that doesn't sound good to me. So I just gotta warn you guys, if you have sensitive skin, maybe this might be a no-go. Um, I'm gonna report back if I have any reactions. Now because it's like dry as hell, we're in the middle of a snowstorm here in the Northeast, I'm going to be using a hydrating primer. Today it's gonna to be the Fenty Pro Filter Primer. Quick side note, if you guys have yet to try this primer, it is fantastic <laughs> for just overall making that makeup adhere, making your makeup last longer. It's hydrating, especially this time of year. It's so good on the skin. Now, after taking a look at these foundation shades, I decided that I'm gonna go with Deep Neutral One, and this is gonna go on the outer parts of my face, and then the inner parts, like where I would want my face to be naturally highlighted, I'm gonna go in with Deep Golden too. Ideally, I would prefer a deep golden shade that was closer to my skin tone, but I think this is the best that I'm going to get. Now, on the bright side though, one pump gives you a whole lot right there. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a very like full coverage foundation. A little bit is going to go a long way. So on the outer parts of my face, this is what I get with one pump. Now if I wanted some more full coverage, I could go with another pump on top. But as you can see, one pump is just like a really natural finish. Now I'm going to go in with deep golden uh, one in the middle points of my face blend that out just to see how we're looking there. Okay, so after touching this up with a makeup sponge, we can see that one pump of the deep neutral one and deep golden one in the center, this is what it looks like. Very your skin, but better. But to be honest, this reminds me a lot of the True Blend Matte Made Foundation. I'm not seeing anything different. Now, ordinarily, I would leave this as is because I think this looks beautiful. I do wanna try one more pump of deep neutral one because I wanna see if I can get some more coverage. I think this looks great, but for some of you guys, you might be looking for more coverage than this. So let's see if it does get better adding a little bit more okay so this actually is not bad take a look at it it did add some more coverage on the bottoms because especially me I just have very small little dots of hyperpigmentation to you guys it might not be that much but <laughs> I can see them and they bother me but they did cover them up a lot nicely um, so it still looks natural so you can go that ultra light beat or you can add a little bit more but what I'm trying to say is it doesn't look ultra cakey if you add more on top of a layer now here's where things get uh, not so great <laughs> when you look at the concealer shade range there are six concealers okay uh, so let's start with the lightest one here we have light medium it looks like a little off right like the color even for light medium just looks weird um, and the plastic isn't colored here it's not orange it's just that's the way it looks then you have tan cool medium neutral medium to tan golden tan to deep golden and this is like like on what planet let's just open this one so I can show you guys it just looks strange really like who is really this color no one. It's weird. It's weird. That's, it's a weird concealer shade. It's just really yellow. So whoever did the testing in the lab, whoever approved this, whoever signed off on that, you were wrong for doing that, okay? So the last one we have here is a Deep Cool. So this might be promising. I honestly don't know. Let's swatch it on the skin. So that's it right there. It's not too bad. 
I'm gonna try it, although to be honest, I don't think it's gonna give me much of a highlighting effect because it's a little bit too dark for me. Actually, it's not that bad. I take that back, I take that back. <laughs> But normally, if I were using this, I would definitely, definitely be using this with a golden um, undertone concealer. So to be honest, I mean, this is practically like my skin tone. It's not too bad, but I will be taking the Makeup Revolution C13 and adding that on top just so I can get some like highlighted look because I just feel like my face looks really flat. So that's a whole lot better once I add that concealer and you can just see how much they're missing in the concealer shade range. Like I said before, I really just think that they can do a lot better than that. Now for the actual pressed powder, I'm gonna go ahead and try this shade right here. This is called Tan Golden. And uh, let's just hope for the best and hope that this is the right shade for me. Wow, look at that. I do have to say, given the fact that it looks extremely light on camera, <laughs> not too bad in person, this is actually a really nice powder. And look, it did not bring about any fine lines. It actually looks kind of blurred underneath there. That I am impressed with. Before we get into the darker powder for bronzer, I do want to kind of like touch on this little contour palette here. So this is actually really nice. There are some really great colors and this is like a nice corrector here and here. We've got some great contour shades and concealing shades. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this shade and this shade to contour my cheeks and also my jawline. So as you can see, this is not too bad. This is actually more of a warm sculpt that's going on. Now, I didn't have the best luck in blending it. Initially, it took me a lot longer than like some of my other drugstore cream bronzers, but that's okay because actually the finished product is still nice. Now I'm gonna take this pressed powder here and use it to just kind of clean up my cream contour. So while that sits there, I'm gonna go ahead and take this powder. This is Deep Cool number four. Now I know it doesn't look like much on camera. It probably looks really light to you, but I promise it is a deeper, cool toned contour. Okay, these eyeshadows palettes are so pretty so first off you have this one which has a lot of really cool tones and also a few warm tone shimmers totally work appropriate and beautiful actually in person it's stunning I don't even think that the camera is doing it justice then you have this one which kind of gives me a little bit of um, Anastasia Beverly Hills soft glam like from here all the way down here, those kind of vibes, really, really pretty. And then you have a cool tone, kind of more edgy palette right here, that blue, oh, it's so beautiful. And here you have a bunch of really vibrant shimmers. I do have to say, in person, these palettes are all like really vibrant. For some reason, on camera, they look a bit muted down, but uh, <laughs> don't disregard them. They do look beautiful. So let's see how they perform. So first things first, I'm going to take this shade right here and go into my transition and we'll see. I'm not really sure how pigmented these are going to be, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they're gold. Oh wow, that's a lot of pigment. Okay, bring it cover girl. Next, I'm gonna go in with this one right here in my transition as well. Now, I'm gonna switch over to this palette. It's called, let's see, oh here, Posh Chic. The name is kind of buried, but I'm gonna go in with these two shades uh, focus, focus, there we go. This one first, and then this one on the outer corner of the eye. Now, I do have to say, this is a beautiful color. I mean, it's very muted. It's something that you could wear to work. It's vibrant, but it's like suitable to my skin tone enough to where this could be like an everyday shade, you know? So see how that turned out? It turned out so pretty. I do have to say, I like the shades. The shimmers definitely require a wet brush, 
but it's not too hard to lay everything down to blend them out I mean I'm fairly surprised okay so they also have some really bomb liners like look at these you've got green purple black yellow blue and silver um, I'm gonna swatch them for you guys so give me just a sec okay so these are the swatches of the liners and you know I just have to say I like live for a good purple liner but this blue one is also really catching my eye uh, if I knew I was gonna love the blue one so much I would have done an eye look that would correspond to it but I think I'm gonna go with the purple for the sake of matching this eye look so it could be a little bit cohesive you know what I mean um, I will say that when these went on like I swatched them Oh my gosh, they feel so creamy. They don't tug at the skin. So I'm really surprised. And I think that the pigment looks great. I mean, the yellow could be a little bit more pigmented, but still, I mean, it looks gorgeous. So you see that? It actually looks so gorgeous. Now you always need to go on top with a powder shadow to kind of lock that cream in place. So I'm going to go into this darker cool toned palette and pick this purple right here. So I just added lashes and honestly I'm so happy with the way that this eye look came out. Um, now on to blush. There are three different highlight and blush palettes that they have going on in this collection. So the first one is this right here and this looks beautiful although this hot pink blush kind of scares me because I'm not really into blush that's like so bright but these two highlight shades are gorgeous. I'm thinking about using this one later and you have this one right here which is more for like tan slash medium skin tones and then you have this one here so i'm kind of eyeing this mauve blush i just want to try it let's see how it looks Ooh, this is nice like this is totally my kind of shade just a hint of shimmer but like mauve you know what i mean because it's not too overpowering and of course dipping into this middle shade right here for the highlight I've got a very very small amount on my Laura Mercier brush and I'm just going to sweep that on so honestly after I spritzed it down with some setting spray again it actually looks really really nice it's more of like a sheen, you know, and I think that's the key to this because it did kind of look a little bit chunkier before I spritzed some setting spray on it, but I really like it now. Um, so as far as lips, we got a lot here. We got a lot of choices. Um, I'm definitely going to go with something neutral. There's this pretty, it's like this brownish caramel color with some sparkle flex and I'm gonna go ahead and combine that with my ColourPop BFF3 liner which I've been loving they're like four bucks I didn't know how bomb ColourPop liners were um, but BFF3 is like such a great alternative to MAC chestnut although it's not as dark as that one this is actually super pretty but now I'm like, damn, I feel like I need my liner to be a little bit darker. So now I gotta grab my MAC Chestnut, even though I said I was gonna use only BFF3. <laughs> I just changed my mind. See, that looks so beautiful to me now. Ugh. It's like so scrumptious looking. So I just want to sum up my final thoughts for you. You know, although things started off definitely kind of rocky and I'm holding firm to the fact that I think that CoverGirl could definitely improve some of the shades and undertones in this foundation. But I will say I'm really happy that they went very, very deep um, with the darkest shade. I have to give them props on that. As far as the concealer, I really can't see myself ever using it. There just is isn't even a standard deep like lighter deep shade there's only deep cool so I can only see that working for somebody who's like ebony skin tone in which case that's wonderful and I'm so glad that you have a you know concealer shade but like when we looked at that tan golden that looked like it was like mustard it was such a strange color I don't even know who would actually be using it now in regards to the eyeshadow palettes the eyeliners the highlight and blush palette the lipsticks 
products, um, the face powders. I love them. I think that they're actually really, really beautiful. Um, now, I will go ahead and I will be checking in. I'll do a quick check-in in about six hours so you guys can just see how this holds up, um, if it does kind of hold back any oils. So I'll see you guys in six hours. Hey guys, so it's actually been about seven hours since I've been wearing this foundation. And uh, I gotta let you know, I haven't touched this up since I sprayed my setting spray on it the last time you guys saw me. And I have to say, I am usually a moderately oily girl. Not too oily, but I definitely need to touch up at least once during the six to eight hours that I'm wearing a foundation. I don't know, I have to say, I am really impressed. As much as it bothers me that the undertones and the shades aren't as inclusive as CoverGirl's previous uh, foundation selection, the True Blend uh, Matte Made, which I love. I have to say, if you can find a shade in this foundation, like, you're gonna love it. Cause I mean, look at this, seven hours and this is how oily I am, which is like not very much at all. I was a lot more matte at the beginning, you know, after I applied this, but like, damn. Damn, like I'm really surprised. I do have to say in terms of containing oil, it's probably better than the True Blend Matte Made Foundation, but I will say that in terms of the natural coverage, it's probably very similar, if not just a tiny bit better than the True Blend Matte Made, because you can layer on the foundation and get more coverage if you want to. Now I'm not gonna say that it's exactly like full coverage straight off the back, is probably like light to a medium slash full. So not quite full, but you can get there if you build it up. I do have to say that I personally think that the primer made a huge, huge difference because I didn't need to touch up like once in my oily T-zone area. Like, that's amazing. That almost never happens. So I will be definitely testing out that primer more with some other different foundations. But as for how the makeup looks, and I think I finessed it well enough so that I can prove to you guys that it's wearable and I love the drugstore prices, like it's a bomb. I definitely think that you guys should check it out. So if you wanna check out more drugstore reviews, check out the playlist over there, the drugstore foundation and concealers review playlist. You're gonna find a lot of gems in there, especially if you love affordable makeup. As always, I love you guys. Thank you so much for chilling with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.